Hey friends, I just finished a live stream, the uh, Cichlids and Coffee live stream, and I want to go ahead and give you a walk through the fish room, let you know what's going on with the fish, in particular a brand new baby red tear that I just picked up. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in here. Warning, it's a mess in here. I just finished the live stream, I've got stuff everywhere. I'm also trying some new microphones. These mics are lapel mics, they're a little bit less cumbersome than the large wireless uh, Lavalure system that I had before. We'll see, we'll compare the quality and let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here in the fish room. Here's that live stream mess I was telling you about. You thought I was kidding? <laughs> Lights, computers, coffee cups. But right next to that, we have the uh, 210 gallon South and Central American tank. Let's see what's going on in there. These are chocolate cichlids. Every time I look at them, I you can see a different color. Sometimes they do look chocolate, other times they look light gray. There's two of them. People are pretty surprised that they get along. They've lived together almost their whole life. I got them when they were pretty young. Sometimes they get into it with each other. Here's Sally. Sally the Salvini. Looking good. She's been getting into it with the uh, Severum. But the Severum, interestingly enough, doesn't back down. You think the Severum would. You normally don't consider a Severum as a, uh, as a very, very hard predator, but this one does not back down, which is good. I was hoping that would be the outcome, which is why I brought him over to this tank because of, he was a little bit too hard on the red spotted gold Severum in the 90 gallon. I say, well, maybe he needs to be with, with uh, just a more aggressive fish, and that's, that's worked out fine. I wouldn't say that he's the boss over the uh, Salvini, but he certainly d doesn't let himself be pushed around. The Oscars are always camera hogs, albino Oscar, that for some reason grows a lot slower than the sibling. This is a... Uh, just a standard red tiger, noticeably larger than the albino. Here's a nice, big, beautiful vieja. Beautiful colors on that fish. Yeah, buddy, I was just talking about you. I'm really glad you're doing well in this tank. Group of silver dollars back there that have thrived in here, surprisingly. Put them in a sort of a dither fish. They're doing great. There's the green tear back there. The little green tear I picked up from Brandon, the blind fish keeper. You can check him out, he's back on YouTube. Look at that fire mouth. That's a beautiful fish. Protects the middle of the aquarium. Got a couple geals in here that I was apprehensive about. But they're holding their own. There's plenty of sand in here. You can see the sand, tons of it. So they get under the, uh, under the pebbles and sift the sand constantly like geos do. Nobody really goes after them. They just kind of go after each other from time to time. These chocolates sometimes get a, like a burgundy color mixed with a green. Very pretty fish. Don't let him bite you though, he'll hurt you. This is the 300 gallon African cichlid tank. And if you look to the back center of the aquarium, you'll notice there's a pit back there that is being guarded by that eye biter. It looks like a neon blue light, doesn't he? Well, he's starting to get a real, real Real aggressive, protecting that spot back there. Darting around, shaking his body, shimming the way cichlids do when they get real aggressive. So I'm gonna fill in that hole back there. I'm just gonna move substrate from this little mound right there and from the mound to the left of it. I'm just gonna fill that up and that will calm them right down because there'll be nothing left to protect. Leucochromus, Nodotania. There's that beautiful trout. 
the turquoise back there, Kawingi. I had my friend uh, Whip come over and he fell in love with this uh, red empress. Protomelis. Beautiful reds and blues in the body. Beautiful fish. Buchochromis rhodesii yellow. Quite a big specimen, probably pushing 10 inches. Very thick. Nobody messes with him. I was afraid he was going to become very aggressive because he could have probably run over a lot of these fish. And I thought he was going to be picking on the Buchochromis notatania, but just ignores him. I was also concerned that he'd go after the uh, Buchochromis spectabilis, which is over here on this side. That's another Buchochromis, and sometimes they go after similar species, but he just leaves them alone. Here's the little runt Venusus hanging out in the corner. Just kind of keeps to his own. Cute little guy. Kind of a stunted growth. Strigatus. Strigatus is an older fish. Still looks great though. African cichlids will peak in color and shape and then they start to, as they get older, they sort of make a, a turn and then they start to, like this gar up here, he's sort of on the way down. They lose their color. They, they start to look a little bit ragged. And that's all part of uh, the cichlid just getting older. The Kawingi, beautiful colors in the Kawingi. Hard to beat the blue in an eye biter. This one here is a, um, the blue with the orange anal fin is a fire hap. And that's another fish that looks like he's plugged into the wall. Just incredible blue coloration. Very, very pretty. These tanks over here are just growing out. Little plecos. There is a shrimp in here. And I think I just got a new batch of babies. You see them there on the top of the cave, there's one. So I think a new, new batch just hatched. You see them darting around. I'm gonna get overrun with plecos here, with plecos and snails. But there is a little uh, red shrimp. I saw him in here last night. So I know he's alive and well. Maybe he's in the cave or maybe he's up in the hornwort. But I know he's around. He likes messing around on the spot. Well, yeah, there's a whole bunch of babies. We definitely have a new batch. Oh, and there's the shrimp. There he is. You see him on the plant? Some of you think it's an Amano. Doesn't look like an Amano to me. But he seems to be uh, happy in this aquarium. Just did a video on, on this, on this guy, on the Hyger HD099-L. Check out that video. Here's a, another batch of plecos that were born a little earlier. They're getting up close to an inch. When they get about an inch and a half, I'll take them over to the local fish store. Here's that hang on back, working great. This morning there were some plecos right in the overflow area, just playing in the waterfall. Here's that uh, red spotted gold severum I was mentioning to you earlier. He was getting beaten up by that red shoulder, so I moved the red shoulder out to the 210. So this guy's a lot happier now. And this was the subdominant EBA, electric blue Acara. And since I moved the, uh, the more aggressive one out, he's doing great by himself. Loves being the, uh, the head Acara. Got some albino 
a car is in here. There's one of them there behind the wood. Congo tetras, beautiful Congo tetras, hard to catch on camera. They're always darting around so much. Here's the newest, the newest setup, the planted 55. I'm loving this uh, this tank. There's some of the uh, White Cloud Mountain minnows up there, the 24 karat gold variety. Got some neon blue rainbows, dwarf rainbows. School of money of rummy nose and neons. Little school of rasboras. There are also some ember tetras over here, if you can make them out. The little embers. A little hard to film because they're so small. Now what I'm going to do is I have some additional, I have some, some of this substrate. You see how this goes from, from black and then it goes into this gray rock? I'm going to go ahead and, and add more gray rock so I lighten up the whole side of the aquarium. This is the white sand that used to be in the aquarium. See it down here? I got three buckets of this white sand. And what I did is I ran it through a strainer and I was able to pull all of this out of it. It's a combination of that, of that gravel together with uh, maybe there's a little bit of a crushed coral in there too that wouldn't go through the strainer. So I think I'm gonna add that to the left side of this aquarium to lighten things up a little bit. And that way you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see the neons. And the embers a little bit more. There's an auto on the filter up there. See a little auto up there? A cute little guy. I've got some quarries in here hiding in the, uh, in the jungle. We've got some, maybe four or five quarries. There's an albino and a few regular bushy nose. Placos hiding in there. They, they love being in that little jungle area. Some lemon tetras I've had for a long time. Some crips. Some anubias. A little red lily. And this is the other uh, 55 where I'm keeping uh, this beast. The red, red terror. This, this plant with the rock bottom was actually over here. It was down here, right in the front, right there. So somehow he's managed to work it. After digging this pit, the substrate was all nice and level, right? Now he's got a bare bottom back corner here, exposing the bottom of that plant, which is a big granite bottom or a limestone bottom. And then he's dug out this section here. And then he moved this plant with the rock base. He moved that over to the left side kind of blocking the uh, the internal filter. Well, truth is, is I kind of love what you've done with the place, sir. You've done a real, real good job redecorating. Yeah, he knows he's a handsome guy. I'm growing out a little female that was brought to me by Whip. Let's see if she'll come to the front of the aquarium. There she is. A cute little fish. Very shy. Every time, every time I try and film, she just disappears into the back. And then I scare a pleco, who whips up a bunch of detritus, and then I'm just in a snowstorm. I've got two big plecos in here, not big, two three inches, and and this little baby female red tear. 
So I'm gonna be growing, growing her out. When she gets too big for that tank, I'll probably put her here in the 90 gallon, let her put on some size here, but not enough size to where she becomes overly aggressive to the fish that are in this tank. So I'll be watching her really closely. When she gets to about maybe three to four inches, maybe five inches, I'll put a divider in the 55 and I'll bring her in here so she can safely get acquainted with this big brute here. And maybe, maybe they'll get together and breed. If they don't get together, worst case scenario, maybe I'll, I'll put her in the, uh, ultimately, put her in the 210 gallon. And maybe she would get along with the fish in here. I mean, you can see here just how beautiful these fish are when they get older. So maybe, maybe she can live in here. Especially if I put, especially if I put her in when she's real young and she grows up with these fish, maybe she'll be less likely to become a tear. Unlike the uh, red tear, which when I put them in here just creates total chaos. So there's the update. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, ask any questions, provide any tips, suggestions below, any ideas. You know, I read them when I can. And thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Great one hour with a great group of fish keepers. And if you like the channel, don't forget to uh, hit the bell. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, if you want to support it further, consider becoming a Patreon. A monthly, monthly Patreon Garage Gang member supporter. Starts for as little as $3 a month. The details are below the video. Thank you, my friends. You are appreciated. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.